uh, Highland Cinema in London, Ontario, originally was built in 1933 as a neighborhood theater, and it was called the Elmwood. And uh, it uh, ran as the Elmwood until 1955, when the Odeon Company of England bought it and changed the name to Highland. Up until 1989, and then they closed it down, and it sat for about 16 years before Marwan Ali bought the theater and reopened it. That was in the, at the end of 04, beginning of 05, that they did that. And I, would, I, I came on board with them to be their head projectionist. Digital just took over almost overnight. It was almost a no-brainer because, uh, you, one, you could do away with a lot of your, uh, all your projectionists, really. You don't need to have them. So that's s supposed cost savings right there. And uh, when Avatar came out, it really gave 3D a boost. And the studios loved that because uh, of the, the extra money they were making on the surcharges, you know, charging more for 3D and everyone wanted it and everyone has to see Avatar in 3D. That made everyone think, hmm, we need to convert to digital. Because uh, before that, everyone was kind of slow on it because the price you know, $100,000 per screen approximately is a lot of money. When we went digital, when we put the digital projector in, projector in a year ago, we uh, could have just removed the 35 millimeter equipment, but we didn't. We've uh, maintained both film and digital. And even though 99.9% .9 of what we show is all digital now because it's hard to get film prints, we, we're still ready to go. Like we can run movies reel to reel or off one single projector in a platter system. We're the last theater in London that can actually show film, period. So it's kind of historic. The, you know, there's a definite art and craft to putting on a good show as a professional projectionist. Especially at a single screen theater where you're running all, a great variety of films and you're running them reel-to-reel uh, -reel with two projectors and changeovers and not just off of, uh, you know, one single platter. And if you have <clears throat> stage lighting and curtains and all of that stuff, most of the multiplexes are bare minimum, you know, just room, screen, speakers, audience, and uh, there's no showmanship at all at most of these places. The hard drives get ingested into our server, and uh, so then once it's ingested into the server, it plays from the server, and then we put the hard drive away, keep it as a backup. Many of the trailers just come on uh, USB sticks or a DVD. And this is a playlist. So it would have the start and then a coming soon and the trailers then the movie. And then I have to put in the cues at uh, the right times for the lights to go up and down. That's really it. I could just sit here all day. Or I could just go home, just stay home all day, all week. We do our Retromania series once a month where we pick an old classic film and we show it on 35 millimeter film instead of uh, the other shows that we play on digital. So it's great to keep uh, the 35 millimeter alive once a month anyway. Uh, there's a lot of young people that haven't seen these films on a big screen. So they're actually really excited to come to a theater and see their favorite movie on a big screen. So that's really satisfying that we're able to, able to do that. And the truth is that if we get a good print, these things look really great. Like there's no way we'd get the same uh, quality from a Blu-ray or a digital version of the movie. Uh, it's just not the same. There's definitely something to be said for watching it on film. There's just something very organic uh, about it. Um, it really jumps off the screen if done right, and we do it right. We do have a, a following of people that really 
they don't want to come unless it's on 35 millimeter. If we were to say the digital version of this movie or not say anything at all, they would ask us, is this going to be in 35 millimeter? So we, we get that a lot. So we, we uh, try to stick to 35 millimeter on any of these classics. And um, in most cases, it's always a better presentation. Any movie can be watched at home, especially today's home theater systems are, can be quite good, from good to orgasmic. However, you're alone. You're, it's just you and a couple people, you're alone. You can pause it at any point. And psychologically, the fact, just the idea of pausing it, just knowing that you can pause it at any point, or eject it at any point, changes it, makes it less valuable somehow, where when you buy a ticket and go to a theater and sit down there with an audience, it's different. And uh, you really want to watch this movie. You're not going to pause it. There's something about a great film at a, at a theater with an audience that you'll never get that at home. And you'll never see that movie for the first time again, by the way. So you want your first viewing experience of that movie to be great, as good as it can be. I don't like digital as it is right now. It's, I find it very depressing that this is what we've settled on. 2K digital projection in theaters, but 4K projection, on the other hand, is something that actually starts to reach what 35 millimeter can do, resolution-wise, you know. And so I'm kind of excited about that. However, I don't. I'm not holding my breath as to when this is really going to happen. I want to see 8K and higher. I want to see much. I mean, the potential is tremendous. That's exciting. Then, then something positive comes out of losing film. And by the way, I don't think we should lose film. Like film should be preserved and maintained. Why does it have to be one or the other? It's gonna take the James Camerons or whoever comes along and is just this genius that, that shows how it's done and shows that it, this is what people really wanna see. And this is what people will come out to. And um, just like Avatar, practically overnight. Some people are just on the ball and visionaries and and they're not wearing, they're not the studio suits that really just can't think that way. So it's a mixture of business and art, and you know, it's kind of how it always has worked, I think. <laughs>